watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. When it's time to take off, I'll be jumping out the gym. Back with game reviews, come get the school from Josh and Glenn. I think when we have that energy and spotlight on us, I think we're really going to show teams what we're about this year. We need to play like Beast from uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I mean, I heard 2-21 and 21 our record every day, every day. You know, they can knife through that defense like a salamander. It's Friday night high school basketball in Indiana. I, if you can't get excited about that, you probably don't belong on the court. Television on, watching highlights zone. Wayne 15, Friday nights, who bringing the dub home? Local area sports with a hip-hop remix. Mike Strong. Here for the basketball season, television on, watching highlights on. One is fun, but twice is just as nice. Conference play is picking up in the SAC with your first girls boys doubleheader Friday night. That includes the cage at Concordia, where the cadets honoring distinguished alum Eugene Parker, the late sports agent, having his name etched alongside Concordia's brand new floor. And to top it off, Carol at Concordia, it is your. Highlight Zone Game of the Week. The Chargers coming in 2-0, already matching last season's win total. Concordia entering with a 2-1 record, their lone loss to Northwood. And this game, with such a frenetic finish, we pick it up in the third quarter. Cole Hayward, the one-handed jam. That makes it a 39-36 Concordia lead. And the Cadets adding to it. Allen Termolin picking up some loose change in Concordia, extending their lead by 541 to 36. Now, the man leading the Cadets most of, most of the season, a Johnny Washington. Give him a basket, plus the foul and the Cadets of 45 to 38. Yeah, I'm in disbelief myself. Jackson Pardon though, part of my French foot uh, chargers of Carroll trying to storm back. Next up, Cannon Hauser with another basket and Carroll taking a late lead 51 to 49 Concordia though with one last chance Avery Cook getting fouled on a three-point attempt so all he has to do is his free throws for the win and that one seals the win Cook three for three from the stripe and Concordia wins this at the buzzer 52 to 51. You know we, we didn't quite run what we wanted to but they stood with it. They went second, third option. Um, and then you just got to give Avery credit, you know, you know, for a sophomore to come in. And, you know, he's not known to be able to score, but there's a reason why he's out there. And he's a tough-nosed kid. He's gritty. He guards their best player the whole game um, and just does all the little things for us. And so you give him all the credit in the world for hitting three big free throws there to win it. We, we knew we had to get a bucket, whether send it in overtime or win the game. And uh, Allen says... Uh, I'm going to give it back to you, you're going to be open. So that's what happened. Pump Bay got him in the air, tried to go into him, draw a foul. That's what happened. Well, Avery Cook more than deserves that crown. Next up, Carroll hosts Columbia City tomorrow, while Concordia is off until next Friday when they travel to Dwanger. Staying in the SAC, the Riker Hay Memorial Trophy is up for grabs. Southside visiting Northside in the first quarter, Tay Tay Johnson. Finding his teammate Bodie Dickerson. Dickerson just committed to the University of St. Francis for football, but he's pretty talented on the hardwood as well. That layup ties things at 12 apiece. But Southside, they've got a talented guy themselves, O'Marion Washington. A nice little up and under move in the Archers ahead 18 to 16. And Washington, again, this time showing off that shooter's touch, but Northside down 23, or excuse me, Northside in front this time, 23 to 20. And then it's Tay Tay Johnson taking things into his own hands with that dunk. And Northside brings home the Riker Hay Memorial Trophy, winning 77 to 63. At Kilmer Court, an up and coming Wayne team facing a Snyder team that looks a lot different after last year's stars graduated. Second quarter, Wayne's DJ Dillard dunking this home on the breakaway. Then it's going to be Wayne's Monty Smith with a pilfer and a pair to go with it, making Coach Byron picking pretty happy. Snyder, though, with a couple answers later on in this quarter. How about Lincoln Burks coming off an outstanding season on the gridiron? Burks laying this in for two down low, and then Cleveland Clopton. Very talented young guy, perhaps we're going to be seeing later on throughout the highlight zone in his career. Clopton. 
knocking this one in from the elbow, but it's Wayne that goes on to win this 62 to 57. At the brand new Spartan Arena Homestead, six in this week's 4A State Bowl, the Spartans essentially doing their team who just played his first game on Tuesday. First quarter action, Cameron Quinlan coming up with a steal and a score on the other end. Dwinger off to an early 5 to nothing lead. Homestead, though, finally able to uncrack that lid off the top of the basket on that jumper for Will Jamison, but it's still a 5 to 2 game. Now, let's go to the second. Homestead in full control. Kyron Kapuiki knocking in that triple. Big day for him. We'll mention that in a matter of moments. But first, how about Preston Ross? A multi-sport athlete himself. Tipping this in, but it's Kapuiki who nails two free throws at the buzzer himself. And Homestead wins a nail biter 50 to 48. Final stop for Boy Soups. Lures at Northrop. No Fonzo White this year for Lures. Instead, it's Seth Hoffing leading the program. Let's go to the first quarter with Isaac Zay knocking in this three pointer. Uh, part of a strong start for Bishop Brewers after Northrop gets out to an early lead. Then it's Caudell Wallace dropping in two of his 14. This is part of a 7 0 run for Lures, and they lead 7 2. Now, Northrop. Answering back, Jaden Schmank with the dish to Nitez Chandler Merriweather. And Nitez saying Schmank you very much after that dish. That ties things up at 11. Then it's Dalman Alexander going to work down low, give him a basket and the foul. Northrop up by three. But Nick Thompson, this guy's going to go play football at Toledo. He shows off the range there. And it's Lures taking care of business on the road, winning 66 to 54. That does it for the fellas tonight, but coming up after the break, we are full steam ahead for girls hoops. That includes a game that will go a long way in determining the NEA champion as Columbia City and Norwell square off in Ossian. Meanwhile, a special night out in Monroeville, and we've got a full slate of SAC girls games coming up. All of that and more up next in the zone. We're the Norwell Knights. Stay tuned. You're watching the Highlight Zone. Yeah! I'm Sherry Gilbert from Heritage High School. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Well, when it comes to girls basketball, there's a proud history at Heritage. The Patriots winning the state title back in 1982. They made history that year as the school with the smallest enrollment of any Indiana State champion during the one class system. A record they still hold to this day. The coach during that run, you just saw her, Sherry Gilbert, and tonight, the school dedicating their brand new court to their former coach. On top of that, Patriots with a solid matchup hosting Southern Wells. And Heritage searching for their first points in the first quarter. Danica Fuller filling up the bucket. Busy night for her and the Patriots out to an early 3-0 lead. Southern Wells answering back on the other end, scoring five unanswered Zoe Needler. Needling her way for the putback. And it's 5-3 Southern Wells, but Claire Bickle very talented student athlete, Bickle, with a nice runner to tie things up at five. And then finally, some good ball movement for Heritage is going to wind up in the hands of Fuller. And Fuller cashes in for another three. Heritage taking care of business, winning 51 to 32. And the NE8, an absolutely huge game of the Castle. Norwell hosting Columbia City. The 8 and 1 Knights hosting 8 and 1 Columbia City. Let's go to the first quarter with Addison Baxter with a steal and a layup on the other end. And Columbia City looking good. Second quarter, Tessa Tonkel. Similar result, the steal and the dish to Addison Baxter. And then it's going to be Tessa Tonkel again. This time with an even better pass behind the back to Kendra Sheet. And it's all Columbia City from there at the castle as they go on to win this against Norwell, 82 to 66. This is a huge win for us here in conference play. It is always so difficult to win down here in Norwell. It's been many years since we've won. Coach Thornton has a great team. They're always fundamentally sound. It's always a very tough matchup, a great rivalry. Um, I feel like we shared the ball really well. We ran our transition well. We kept our pace and we played our tempo. Yeah, I agree with everything she said. And then just playing defense, communicating, and then playing together as a group. I feel like even slowing down more, playing 
our game with more pace and even just trusting our teammates more. Making the right passes and then just keep doing what we're doing. Well, meanwhile, you've got Huntington North in the hunt for the NEA crown. The Vikings on the road at a young New Haven team. First quarter action, Leah Hurdle driving in for two. And it's pretty much the start of a solid night for the Vikings. Gracie Fields, the junior, driving in. Give her two more. And Fields going on to have a field day down at New Haven. Fields going on to nail this jumper coming up right here, and it's Huntington North. All Huntington North as they win 54 to 18 at New Haven. Let's go to the SAC where Northrop is looking like the team to beat for the conference title. Bruins rank seventh in 4A. They host Bishop Moores, and Northrop already had 41 13 at the break. Third quarter, Riley Peppel with a little pep in her step. She finishes with a dozen, and the Bruins up by 30. Later on, Nevaeh Jackson. Coming up with the bunny on the other end after that steal, she goes on to score a team high 24. And that hustle all on display for the Northrop Bruins. We just featured Nevaeh. How about her twin sister, Sanaya? She finishes with two of her 16 right there, and it's all Northrop from there as they win 67 to 18. How about Homestead with a clutch win over Carroll last Friday? The Spartans hosting Bishop Wenger in the third quarter. It's Emma Royce going coast to coast, skimming the basket and the foul. And the Spartans ahead big 41 to 13. Though Vanessa Cook trying to cook up a comeback for Bishop Wenger. She lays this in. It's a 41 to 15 game, but the Spartans just too much as Maya Epps, one of the top. Freshman in Northeast Indiana, she extends Homestead's lead. And the Spartans taking care of business on their home floor against Bishop Wenger, 57 to 21 on Friday. Down at the cage, Concordia hosting Carroll, the Chargers 16th in this week's 4A State Bowl. And really, Friday night was the Kayla Gibbs show. Gibbs getting her own miss and able to lay this in Carroll up by 15. How about a little more from Gibbs. She's committed to go play basketball at Spring Arbor University. Gibbs from distance. Oh, can I mention she gets fouled right here too. That makes it a four point play. Gibbs going on to score 20. Now Concordia trying to make this a game late as Olivia Bollinger lays in two of her team high 17, but Carroll charging ahead as they go on to win 68 to 41. That's Kilmer, of course. Snyder up to 13 this week in 4A Panthers hosting a dangerous Wayne team. Snyder, meanwhile, going with Kyra Parker. She goes along the baseline, but Snyder really led by a talented young guard named Jordan Cool. She's getting some looks all over Division I schools. She shows off that shooter's touch on the fadeaway right there. General's trying to answer back as Anaya Hill going to annihilate the basket coming up here with that three-pointer, but Snyder in control from this one, winning 67 to 43. Final stop by Hay Arena as Northside hosts Southside, and the first points of the night belonging to Makaya Harmeyer. She's just a freshman, folks. She knocks in that big time three pointer, and Northside is off to a 3 0 lead. Moments later, Jeliah Page give her the basket. Oh, she gets fouled there too. And she goes on to score a team high 12 points. Now, Southside trying to storm back as Justice Billingsley takes matters into her own hands. She scores off the inbounds and finishes with a team high 16 points. But Northside sweeps the boys and girls rivalry over Southside. The girls win 55 to 32. Stay tuned. Your gem of the night is coming up after the break. We the North for highlights of next. We're the Northrop Bruins. We're always ready for a fight. Let's end this show out night. Here's the gem of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, well, the Highlight Zone wins high flying for its gem of the night. Darion Brooks, man, slamming home two of his 28 points. The New Haven star also with 12 boards, seven assists, almost a triple double, all in his way to taking the Highlight Zone's top honor. What does this week hold for Hoops fans? Well, 
We're about to find out. It's your latest gem of the night, brought to you by our friends at Peter Franklin Jr.'s a Jewelers, and we are focusing on the fundamentals this time. Avery Cook fouled at the three-point line with no time remaining, has to hit three free throws to seal a win for Concordia on an emotional night. And he nails all three of them. That's the final one to put Concordia over the edge, 52 to 51. Concordia honoring the late Eugene Parker. And what a night for the Cadets as they go on to beat Carroll in come from behind fashion. That is your latest gem of the night. Thanks to our friends from Peter Franklin Jewelers. Let's go to some Mad Ants basketball. Where are the Mad Ants? are on the road facing Windy City, winning three of their last four, but Fort Wayne trailing at the half, and Fort Wayne rallying back as Gabe York knocks in three of his 13 to tie things up at 72. Justin Anderson moments later, splashing in three of his 19. That makes it an 81 to 72 game, but Windy City in front at the end of the quarter. Now, the Mad Ants trying to charge back late as Trevelin Queen jams home two of his team by 33. But the Mad Ants lose their second straight as they lose 129 to 119. Silent night game. The only now how about one of the best traditions of all of college basketball down in Upland, Taylor University celebrating their silent night game. 10 points and the fans can finally erupt, erupt from the stands and here it is. That magical 10 point coming at the free throw line. Oh, and not to mention uh, the Taylor fans clearing the floor, and Taylor still playing a game afterwards. And Taylor goes on to win this one 64 to 55. And finally, let's head to the ice where the comments are looking to right the ship after a rough stretch. K's on the road at the Indy Fuel. Now, Comets down three to two, heading into the final period. Sean Boudria nodding things up at three apiece. Indy does respond with another goal. It's Adam Brubaker with a five on three advantage for the Comets. That ties the game at four, but we've seen this too many times. Comets fans might know how this one ends. The Fuel raging back in the final minutes. Just over two and a half to be exact is Cale Howard scores a game winning goal for the Indy Fuel and the Comets fall short in this one using five to four K's or back in action tomorrow when they host the Cincinnati Cyclones at 730. Well, that is going to do it for us on another busy night of hoops around the Summit City. Hopefully you were able to enjoy while Glenn takes a much needed day off. Don't worry, though. Glenn will be back in the driver's seat next week as we are wrapping up hoops, actually our final highlight zone for 2022. You'll not want to miss that. Again, Glenn, back in the driver's seat. Again, I'm Josh, and hope you have a good night.